In today's gospel, we have the story of Zacchaeus uh, when Jesus is going through Jericho. A couple of interest, a few interesting things about Jericho. One is that it is the oldest city in the world. It has a sign there. If you go into Jericho in the main town square, uh, that says the world's oldest city. Um, it's been inhabited for over 10,000 years. Uh, it's in the middle of a desert, but yet it has water, so it's a racist. It has uh, nice trees, but it's really not that attractive of a city. Um, but again, um, old, old city. When we think about cities in the, uh, in the Bible, that there are some that still certainly exist today, like Alexandria, Egypt, or, or Athens, or Rome, or Thessaloniki. I think about Paul's letter to the Thessalonians, Thessaloniki, second largest city in Greece. And yet there are some that, uh, because of war, because of uh, natural disasters, because of disease, uh, no longer exist. So Philippi uh, would be one, Paul's letter to the Philippians, Paul's letter to the Athenians, uh, uh, Ephesus no longer exists. You can go to the ruins, uh, but it did no longer exist. The other thing about um, Jericho is that it is a zone a city. The West Bank has three zones from the Oslo uh, Peace Treaty. Uh, zone A is Palestinian uh, government and policing. Zone B is uh, Palestinian authority it has the governance, but Israeli policing. And then Zone C is Israeli occupied, Israeli um, owned, um, Israeli governed, and Israeli um, policed. Uh, if you go into Jericho, you would not do like the man who was uh, fell among robbers. You wouldn't go walking from Jerusalem to Jericho, but you would go driving into Jericho. You'll see a sign that says you're entering in a zone A city. It is in three languages, in, in Arabic, uh, Hebrew, and English. It says it is forbidden for an Israeli citizen to enter this town and doing so may cause, be of great danger uh, to your doing so. So it gives you the warning. Uh, zone A would be, for example, cities like um, Jericho, Nazareth, Bethlehem. Zone B cities would be like Taibeh, or it, which is in the uh, New Testament known as Ephraim in John chapter 12. And then you have a zone C city, which would be like Bethany uh, in the New Testament, where Jesus goes and is anointed by Mary in Bethany. Uh, the other thing about Bethany is that it gets quite hot being in the desert. Um, when we went in late May, it was 103 degrees in Jericho. Uh, it can get up to 105, 107. Occasionally it can get up even higher. Um, it tends to be just like Phoenix or just like other places that are desert places, uh, very dry. So at night it's fine, but during the day it's just absolutely brutally hot. Um, the other thing about uh, uh, Jericho is that we think about the people going up to Jerusalem. Uh, they were going up, so Jerusalem is associated with Mount Zion, is associated with God himself, uh, because you go up to the Temple Mount, you go up but to Jericho, you go down. So in a small amount of uh, area, landmass, uh, 30 miles from Jerusalem, I mean, 30 kilometers from Jerusalem to Jericho, or less than 20 miles, you go from 2,400 feet above sea level to 850 feet below sea level. So that's a little bit about Jericho. The other thing about Jericho is that Jesus had been to Jericho just before this particular gospel. He cures the man who is blind. The people are absolutely enthralled. They're excited. They're, they're saying that God is in our midst. Oh, this is wonderful. They're, you know, Jesus is the hero, the, uh, the person who is anointed by God. Oh, this is wonderful. And then when Zacchaeus comes to up in the tree and he says that he wants to stay at his house, the people begin to grumble. So it shows how human nature can change on a dime from being the hero to being the villain. Um, but again, when we think about tax collectors, again, Zacchaeus being the chief tax collector, it says he was the chief tax collector. 
who is also a wealthy man. That goes without saying, being a chief tax collector would make you wealthy. Uh, what they would do is that they would collect taxes for the occupying Roman army, which, had, uh, which was overtaxing the people, uh, had a far-flung empire. It had to uh, take care of that empire, so it taxed heavily. Uh, so it wasn't very popular. The other thing that they would do is that they would take as much money as they could, and then the rest they would pocket for themselves. And so Zacchaeus uh, was a chief tax collector. So to be in going to a person's house or going to, uh, to eat with them meant that there was some fellowship between the two. So how could this, this, uh, this person who's from God go to, do you know who he is? Uh, kind of a thing. So the people are all grumbling. Um, but, you know, he's going to a sinner's house. But again, from a worldly point of view, yes. From a worldly point of view, it, it certainly seems that if you grade them on, if God grades on a curve, that the people of Jericho would do certainly be better than the people, than uh, Zacchaeus in terms of godliness. That if you grade it on a curve, the problem is that God doesn't grade on a curve. What we see in Romans chapter 11 is, uh, is paraphrased with beautiful paraphrase. It says that God sees all as sinners, that he may show them his mercy. And so what does God want? He wants that repentance. And certainly we see that with Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus is willing to give uh, half to the poor. He's also willing to anybody extorted to give four times over. Um, if he doesn't think that he's extorted anybody, he'll soon find out uh, because I'm sure they'll be lined up at his house. It will be like, okay, keep going, keep going, several more blocks, you know, keep going, keep going back. That's where the line begins. Um, so keep going. Um, he will find that out. But yet he's willing to even be destitute um, because he wants to have that relationship with God. So more than just seeing Jesus, more than just being there in the crowd, he's had that conversion that Jesus is looking for. And so uh, Zacchaeus is really, in a way, that, that one who is that, uh, the one who helps us to understand that it's really what the Lord wants us to do is come to that relationship with him such that we can say, Jesus, whatever you want from me, wherever you want me to go, whatever you want me to do, I'm willing to do it. But the problem is, is that a lot of times with us is that we're willing to say, okay, you can come, Jesus, but not that close. Or you can come into my house, but not in this room or that room. Uh, just stay out here. Um, but with Zacchaeus, we, we see is that full conversion that the Lord wants us to think about. So as we think about our prayer life, as we think about the ways that God has helped us and guided us, are we willing to say, like Zacchaeus, that whatever you want me to do, Lord, I'm willing to do it. Thanks and God bless.